For thousands of years, people have communicated only in person. But in the past 50 years, they also started communicating online. This comes with its pros and cons, but first we have to understand the difference between the two. Uh, most in-person interactions involve uh, communicating non-verbally, from, from exchanging a smile, to touching, to modulating one voice, to convey emotions, uh, for example, cycles. Um, in contrast, many online interaction platforms um, are primarily text-based, lacking visual, uh, physical and auditory non-verbal cues. This means that understanding uh, the communicators uh, through thoughts and feelings becomes much harder. This is the main cause of many misunderstandings online. Also, uh, reading one's opinion versus listening to it um, makes uh, the communicator appear much less thoughtful and emotional. In other words, it dehumanizes them. Um, this, is just, uh, this is a serious problem since uh, most people seem to forget that uh, behind the screen uh, there's another human being with his own problems and uh, emotions and uh, the things we say can harm them. Social interactions allows for passive browsing whereby one can uh, look at others profile and opinions without their awareness. Great anonymity uh, is uh, associated with um, inhibition and aggressive behaviors because uh, it, uh, reduces, uh, it reduces accountability and thereby licenses bad behavior. Social environments that cater to anonymity and uh, weaken social norms are a breeding ground for aggressive behaviors such as bullying. Social media are a perfect example for this. Uh, recent studies show that uh, recent studies shows that uh, Social media are the primary catalyst for letting out someone's rage and for social conflict. But this mixture of online and offline doesn't only have downsides to it. The internet can help provide new friends. For example, 57% of teenagers report having made more than one friend online, and 29% of them report having made more than five friends. These uh, relationships not only are, often, are not only online, but then translate into offline ones. Second, online interaction can provide support when uh, offline interaction is impossible or scarce and help relieve stress during uh, negative experiences. Third, the data can be used as a tool to collaborate with others, to form social groups and movements. The future of human society lies in understanding and consequently shaping uh, online interactions. It is more important than ever that for us, for the law and for science, to maintain pace with this social evolution.